Okay, in this week's Weather Extra, we're going to talk about not only how January and February were so weird, but I'm going to try and explain why they were so weird, because it's a question that came up often in terms of how we were doing days like that in February. This was Super Bowl weekend, middle of February. We were shattering records for daytime highs, and on that Saturday before Super Bowl, that's what it looked like at Ocean Beach. Look at all the people out there. So the pattern that allowed February to be not only record-breaking warm, but also dry, not to mention January, because January also was very dry and pretty warm too, is a familiar pattern. And it's the map that I've shown a lot over the course of the last two months, that big blocking ridge of high pressure out there. And every so often I'd say, well, there's the ridge again. And it's going to keep the storms away. And it's going to also make sure we stay above average. And a common question would be, what's up with that? Why is that ridge so persistent? What will it take to get rid of it? Well, in terms of explaining why it's so persistent, while you cannot get an exact answer for that, we are getting some pieces to the puzzle which may give us some explanation for this. First thing I want to do is just show you what that ridge of high pressure looked like first in the month of February. And this is a unique way of doing it. So rather than just taking a snapshot of one day, This shows you what the setup in the atmosphere was in terms of pressure. The deeper the shade of red, the higher the pressure. See something familiar for the month of February? There's that bullseye. That was our dominant ridge of high pressure. If you took pretty much the whole month of February and averaged it out and then visualized how far above average that pressure field was. So that red bullseye tells you a significant area of high pressure averaged out over the course of the month of February, was out there, and it was, you know, higher pressure than average and stuck in the same position. That much we know, that was part of the forecast like every day. Now, that's February. What we can also do now is extend the time frame because we missed out on January's rain, and January was warm too. So I'm going to change this now, and instead of just looking at February, we're going to look at January and February. Title changed up there. It says January and February. But the pattern didn't change a whole lot. If you average it out now, going all the way back to January 1st, take all of those days, what was the average state of the atmosphere for the whole 60-day period? And you can see for that period, we've got that big blocking ridge of high pressure there. There's a term that was coined for something like that several years ago during the previous wave of drought back in like 2016, 2017. You might remember the term if you're a weather geek. It was called the ridiculously resilient ridge. In other words, a blocking ridge of high pressure like that, that gets set up and is so persistently stuck in one place, the climate community labeled it the ridiculously resilient ridge. And you've got to really go a long time for that. We haven't quite reached ridiculously resilient ridge status yet, but we're getting close. If March stays like this, this is going to be another winter with a ridiculously resilient ridge. And it's already pretty close to that status anyway. So this then leads to the next question. Why does it do that? How do we get a blocking ridge of high pressure like that that so dominates the winter, breaks temperature records, and intensifies our drought? There's one leading explanation for this. And to find it, we have to go to the other side of the Pacific. And now, instead of looking at pressure fields, you're looking at sea surface temperature anomalies. And this is the sea surface temperature anomaly in the Western Pacific. There's Australia, Indonesia, the deeper the shade of red, the warmer than average the sea surface temperatures were when you average it back over the climate records going back, you know, to like the start of the last century. What we're looking at here is what the typical state of that warm pool was for the first 80 years in the 1900s. So from 1900 to 1980, that's what that warm pool looked like. From 1981 going on, watch what happens when I advance this. Now we're looking at 1981 to 2018, and two things happened. That pool grew, and the shade of red got deeper. In other words, since 1981, there has been a noticeable increase in the temperature in the sea surface waters over here on the Western Pacific, and the size of that pool of warm water. In fact, the size of that pool has grown every year from 1981 to 2018. The size of that pool grew by about the same exact size as the state of California. Uh, about 154,000 square miles. 
So now we've got an extra area of warm water over here covering a larger part of the Pacific. That influences the atmosphere. Think of what El Nino does. But El Nino is, you know, when you're on, a couple years off, another year on. This is constant. It's a steady increase in warmer water in that part of the Pacific. And that tends to influence the atmosphere in such a way. You get a larger buildup of convection over here. That starts a chain series of events in the atmosphere, which ultimately leads to descending air in the northeastern Pacific, pretty much in the same spot that we see the ridiculously ridge setting up. Now, there's a lot that goes into atmospheric pressure fields and long-term patterns. So that is not the only reason why we have a ridiculously resilient ridge get set up, but it is the leading candidate. And it's the one the scientific community right now puts the most weight on when they try to answer the question, why do we keep getting these blocking ridges of high pressure? The sea surface temperatures throughout the world have been warming, but that location in the Western Pacific turns out to be particularly important when it comes to the climate of Western North America, where California sits. And that's why we keep getting ridges like that. There's one final little piece to this puzzle, because all winter we've had a blocking ridge of high pressure out here. You usually would get one of those set up anyway. You just used to see it break down more often. The position of it also matters. And as we get into late February and March, that ridge is nudging a little bit farther west. And that has a huge impact. If we can move it a little bit, that changes the storm track. And if you look at the streamlines here, see how they're coming down from the north? That's how you can open up the storm track a bit. It's not an ideal way to do it, but that's how we've gotten a lot of those snowmakers in December. And some of the systems in late February also were able to ride down the front side of the ridge. Let's nudge that thing to the west a little bit if we're going to get any help here. But there's a little bit of insight to a question which understandably is a common one. What's up with that ridge? What's causing it? And what would it take to go away? We don't have all the answers but we're starting to get a clearer picture. All right, that's this week's Weather Extra. Paul Hagen will be in next week with another one.